Okay, so last couple of years were great. You probably changed your job a couple of times, increased your salary by 30 to 50 percent. And if you were a fresher, probably you got a job much better than you expected. Companies were fighting for you and you had multiple job offers. But now you're worried because now you're hearing about the R word. Yes, the recession. And if you ever looked at the news, maybe you saw something like this or this or this and that. Google Sundar Pichai said that they are going to have a high increase till the end of this year. Facebook has already fired some employees, retracted some job offers and also implemented a hiring freeze. And all of the companies like Twitter, Uber, etc. have either fired employees or implemented a hiring freeze for at least the end of this year. Let me know in comments down below what your company is doing right now. Did they freeze hiring? Did they already fire some employees? Are you scared? Let me know all of that in the comments below so that I can also prepare for keeping my job. Trust me, no one really knows what's going to happen and what we can do is prepare ourselves so that we are bulletproof when the technical recession comes and also we can implement some things that will help us get new jobs if not better jobs than we already have and the worst case scenario if we even get fired I'll tell you what we can do to get into a good shape at least by the end of this year. First of all let's look at the root of this problem. The thing is that most of the companies saw that engineers or tech people were not really available, right? Everyone was running after them and we had multiple offers. And the thing is companies had a FOMO feeling and they overhired. They became bulky and now they are thinking about trimming off people. But when they trim off people, your lives actually get affected, yours and mine, right? So we need to do something about it. We'll move forward just after you hit that like button, subscribe button, and now let's get to the important stuff. Now there are three categories that we'll discuss today and we'll discuss all the scenarios for these three. The first one is associate developer or junior developer or maybe a developer who has been working for two to four years. Trust me, you are in the safest position of possible because new employees like freshers, people don't want to hire them because they will have to train everything and they won't probably get the best results in the let's say short term in four to six months. They'll have to train them and they'll take some time. Right? You have been working already for two to four years. You know the ins and outs of the company. You already know how to not make the silly mistakes you used to make in your first six months of the job. Right? So you are in the safest hands. And why? Because in the end, it also comes down to money. How much money do you charge? Right? Probably your senior developer or team leads or managers or software architects charge three to four times your salary. So you are, first of all, a cheap resource for the company. Right? You have still a room to grow. For example, let's say you're making, I don't know, for a random number, $90,000, you can grow up to $200,000 in the coming years, right? The company knows that. But at the moment, you're still charging 70 to 90, which is good for the company. You already know the business and you are in the safest hands. But if you are a fresher or a new developer, you really have to tighten the ropes. You really have to bring out some projects in your resume, have a GitHub profile, the basics, right? If you're a website developer, like if you create Angular, React, Vue, etc., or even if you make things in the back end like Node.js or Java Spring, maybe you, you create APIs or things like that, you need to have websites or mobile applications or any kind of software that you create in your education journey. You need to post that on GitHub. Now, the thing is, yes, these things take time and you have to do something extra from your academics. But imagine. If you were an employer and you had a company, right? Let's say you had a company, you have about half a million dollars to pay three or four developers and also you need some of the money for yourselves, right? In the end, let's say you go to university and there are 50 applicants, right? And all of them did the basic algorithm course, the software architect course, all the courses that you do in a university, let's say you did that. What's special about you, right? Everyone went through the same curriculum and everyone got some grades. So to show that you are different and you are better than others is you can have some extracurricular things in tech. For example, having your own blog, having your own website. Maybe you, are, you write articles on Medium or dev.to, right? Or you can uh, create some projects like we just discussed. These things will help you stand out. And I think one of the best ways you can do this is by hackathons. Because if you go to hackathons and you have to create projects in two to three days, Probably you'll have sleepless nights, but you'll have so much fun with all the students around you. I personally enjoyed hackathons a lot and we used to go there with friends and in the end of two to three days, we had a big project and then we had to present that project to future prospective employers, which was just fun, right? You get more exposure with all of these things. You get exposure, you get connections and you also build up your resume and experience, which is valuable. Now the third and by far the most vulnerable people 
are actually senior developers or team leads or software architects. Now, if your company just has a couple of software architects or higher positions, you're probably safe because the company can't really fire everyone in the senior positions and expect the junior developers to take over, right? Because there's some system knowledge, some DevOps knowledge and architect knowledge that you need in order for the company to move forward. But let's say you are in a company that has 10 software architects or 10 software developers. Maybe you have a senior software developer for every two junior you have in your company who's managing them. It clearly looks like that company might have overhired, right? Because I think a tech lead can easily manage five to six people's team. There doesn't need to be one tech lead for two to three employees. That's obvious. What if your company has a team of three developers, but one, uh, let's say scrum master, one project manager and one tech lead for those three developers, or maybe even five developers. It clearly means that something is bloated there and you probably should already start looking into other jobs. And I'm sure if you have been working for a long time in the industry, you know the ins and outs. But if you were in the same company for a long time, let's say 10 years or more, you might have to polish some things because the things you work on in a current company might be outdated and you will need to work on some skills which we'll discuss at the end of this video. But now let's discuss the doomsday situation. Let's imagine that you or I got fired or laid off. Well, the good news is that tech will always be in demand, right? When companies overhire and then they trim, they usually are looking for cheaper options, right? Or developers who can do the same thing in less amount of time or less amount of money. That's what they're looking for. So let's say you were the 10, 15% of the people who got fired from a tech company. And let's say you take one to three months to get a new job. But if a recession really hits, Let's say you're making $150,000 right now. Maybe you'll only get an offer for $80,000, right? And that looks very bad, but it's not bad. Ask your parents. Your parents might be in the job industry for last 30 to 40 years now, right? If you are anywhere from 25 to 30, let's say your parents have been working for 30, 35 years. Ask them, go to them and ask them how much did they used to make in the first two years or three years of their job. It would look silly they would probably be making 10 to 50 times now. For example, if your father or mother used to make $10,000 a year, now they probably make $100,000. My parents who worked in India, they used to make 1,000 rupees when they started working. 1,000 rupees is like 20 Canadian dollars, even less, right? And now they're making much more than that, right? So it, it's normal that you feel right now that your salary is very important and it's the end of the world if you got a haircut on your salary but actually it's not that bad. If you are actually planning to work for 20 to 40 years, these first few years of your life would be insignificant. And if you are going in the entrepreneurial direction and you're saving money to you know, get some investments, that's a different story. In that case, you have to work extra hours, you have to go find different jobs. But if you are a normal person who wants to work and enjoys working for a company, I think you should not be worried of getting a haircut in your salary it will not be a problem in the grand terms of events. Yes, the first six to 12 months, you might have to cut down on getting a Starbucks every day that costs you seven to eight dollars. You probably will have to go to McDonald's or Tim Hortons, but again, it's not that bad. You will manage. So we already discussed what you can do if you're a new developer, a fresher who wants to get in the job industry. Now let's talk about experienced folks, right? People who have been working for five years or more, how you can make sure that you last in this recession. Well, if you're a senior developer and all you do is help Angular developers fix bugs, or maybe you help React developers, or maybe you help the Node.js folks in making the REST APIs more efficient. Well, I think you are in trouble, right? Because you need to know with your experience, you need to know either of these two things. And best is you, need, you know both. The first one is that you know the ins and outs of the company business. So let's say you're working for an XYZ company and that company makes car engines, right? So in that case, you really need to know the ins and outs of the engine so that even if they bring 10 new developers to replace, they will not know anything about the ins and outs of the industry, right? So if that is one thing that you can really own and that will be dependent on your sector where you work. So I can't really help you much with that, but I think you got the idea. The second thing is that you now need to focus on architecture level things, right? If you are a senior developer, a team lead, no one really expects you to write for loops. You will have to get certification, not that important, but you will have to get knowledge of whatever cloud you are on. Maybe AWS, maybe Azure, maybe 
Google Cloud, right? And then let's say your company doesn't even have a cloud now. You need to start migrating things on cloud, right? Because with those things, what happens is that not everyone can do that. People need experience and they know how to avoid mistakes because these mistakes can be expensive. You need to make yourself irreplaceable, right? So first thing is domain or company knowledge. And the second thing is architecture level things. What if you are responsible for all the migrations of your databases, right? Any high level thing that you are working on will really help you. And if you're managing people, let's say you're managing a team of five to six people, you really need to help them understand everything they can so that all of them would be their cheerleaders, right? Would, they would be your cheerleaders because they would think my team lead is the best. He, not, he or she not only helps me, but also knows much, uh, almost everything about the industry and is highly technically proficient. So you really need to work on those skills. And in the end, if all of you, maybe juniors, senior or freshers, want extra income or want to make yourself really irreplaceable, I recommend that you start creating either YouTube videos or start writing articles. It depends on you what kind of person you are, right? But if you create anything out of your curriculum, I think it's going to be great. You are going to learn something, you are going to make connections and people will look at you and say, hey, this person is different. They really love tech and we think we should keep them no matter what. I think we can all do that and get ourselves a better year and get ourselves out of the recession. I wish you all the very best with your journey and I hope you learned something new with this video. And as a bonus, because you stick till the end, I will link to some courses down below in the description that I have done or I'm planning to do in this year or the next year so that we all can learn together. They are not courses by us. We are not selling you anything, but they are courses that I highly value and learned a lot from and got promotions or changed my jobs because I learned new things. So I hope you can also do that and let's all go out of this together stronger and wish you all the best and see you until next time.